What if, instead of creating an experiment and having the subject actually do something, we had them do something easier, such as nothing? That's what resting state analysis is, and you'll learn how to do it in this tutorial. This analysis uses a measurement called functional connectivity, the correlation between time courses of different voxels. High correlations between distant voxels are said to be functionally connected. The time courses tend to go up together and down together. If you look at how different voxels correlate with one another, in some spots you would see patterns of correlations between distant groups of voxels. We call these patterns resting state networks, or RSNs. Today we're going to focus on a resting state network called the default mode network, probably the most widely studied and most recognizable resting state network. The default mode network is a correlation between the posterior cingulate cortex and the anterior medial frontal cortex. We're going to use some online data to try and detect this resting state network. First, go to openfmri.org and download the dataset by Tsu et al. A link to the dataset can be found in the information box below. Each dataset contains an anatomical image and resting state images with different voxel sizes. We'll focus on the 3x3x3 voxel dataset. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the dataset, you'll notice that there are 12 individual subject directories. For this demo, I'm going to go into subcontrol06. And within this directory, there are three subdirectories. Anat, containing the anatomical image, Fmap, containing the field maps, which we're not going to deal with right now, and Funk, containing the resting state data sets. Just so I have everything in the same place, I'm going to move my anatomical image into my Funk directory. Now, I want to give you some idea about what we're going to be looking at here and what functional connectivity actually does. So if I set my underlay to my 3x3x3 data set, and I click in a voxel, say, in the visual cortex, and I click on graph, that'll show the time series at that particular voxel. Now, the visual cortices, the left and the right, are pretty reliably correlated under resting state conditions. It's a very reliable resting state network. So if I click in a voxel over here on the left, and I click in a voxel over here on the right, it's hard to tell right now without doing the formal comparison but I'm assuming that these two voxels would be relatively well correlated. When one goes up, the other one goes up, and when one goes down, the other one goes down, in general. So we're going to be doing the same thing, but looking for the default mode network. What that means is that in these functional images, once we pre-process them and clean them up, we'll be looking at the time series of the posterior singlet cortex and seeing how well that matches up with the time series of the anterior medial prefrontal cortex. The best way to do this is by using AFNI's ubersubject.py. Once this opens up, you'll notice that there are two ways we can initialize our analysis. There's task, which is the default, and then there's rest. Select rest and hit apply, and you'll notice that a few of the options change. These are just AFNI's defaults for doing a resting state analysis. I'm going to give it a subject ID of SO6 and a group ID of rest. Those are required. And then I'm going to give it my anatomical data set and my resting state data set. So select my T1W for anatomical. And then for epi data sets, select the 3x3x3 three by three by three bold data set. Notice that we're not doing a task, so there's no need to mess with anything like stimulus timing, setting up anything with the GLM. We're not going to be doing any of that. We will be setting up a GOM, but it's only to capture nuisance regressors, like motion and frequencies that we're not interested in. Most of these defaults are fine. If you have any reason you want to change something like the smoothing or the volume registration base, go ahead and do so. But for these purposes, it's usually fine to just leave the defaults as is. Notice that the motion sensor limit in a resting state analysis is much more stringent than in a task-related analysis. That's because motion usually has much greater effects in inducing either correlations or anti-correlations between different voxels in the brain. So for right now, we're going to leave that as a sensor limit of 0.2 millimeters per TR. So what that means, the default in AFNI is to replace each of those censored time points with a zero. Other options are to either just cut it out and thereby shorten the time series by that number of TRs that you censor, or 
to do some kind of interpolation and leave the time series length the same, okay? The other option, the default, like I mentioned, excuse me, is to replace it with a zero. Last thing, I didn't go into too much detail on this, but if you were to align the functional image on top of your anatomical image, you would see that they're slightly off, a little bit more than I'll be comfortable with. And so using the giant move option would make sure that they get into a good enough alignment before it starts doing a fine-tuned registration between the two. Once you've done all that, just click on this first button here. It shows you what AFNI PROC PY script is going to run. Okay, and that's going to be saved out in a file that you can look at later. It'll show you what options have been changed. And then you click on the next button to then generate that script. So AFNI PROC PY, that's one step to create a full length Unix script that runs all the individual AFNI commands, which we'll look at in a little second. And lastly, the green button actually makes the whole thing run. And you can see the progress in this window here. Now, through the power of fading to black, I'm going to speed up this process immensely. It should take you about five minutes on your machine, but for me, it's magical because I have this magical fade to black feature. So I'll see you in a couple seconds. All right, well, that was easy. So what I'm going to do is, now that this is done, I'm going to look within this directory and notice that there's a new folder called subject results. I'm not a huge fan of the hierarchy of directories that AFNI creates, and you have to go through a few of them to actually get to the output. But within this subject.so6 directory, let's look within proc.so6. Now most of this should look very familiar if you use the uber subject script to create a task-based analysis script. Most of the steps are identical. We haven't done anything that's that different for analyzing a resting state data set in terms of pre-processing. But there's one thing I want to point your attention to. So this 1DB port tool, this is a band pass. So if you're familiar with high pass filtering and low pass filtering, essentially what that does is remove really high frequencies and really low frequencies. And especially low frequencies associated with things like uh, you know, breathing, slow scanner drift, uh, heart rate, things like that. In general, for resting state analysis, we're interested in frequencies between about 0.01 hertz to 0.1 hertz. Yeah. So 1dB port is going to take all the parameters for our data, as in how many TRs, what the, the TR is, and it's going to bandpass filter between 0.01 and 0.1. All right. And what this is going to do, this command right here, it's going to then take the inverse or the opposite of those frequencies. So everything outside of that frequency domain, everything that is uh, a higher hertz than 0.1, everything that's a lower hertz than 0.01. And it's going to create a series of frequencies that we want to filter out. Remember the really high frequencies and really low frequencies we want to filter out from our data because those are sources of noise and we don't want them to get confounded with the resting state signal, all right? So what that's going to do is it's going to enter all that into 3D deconvolve along with our motion parameter. So ORDVEC is simply, it's the same thing as these stim files regressing out a lot of motion, right? So these first six are your motion parameters, the next six are the motion derivatives, and ORDVEC takes a 1D file of a lot of regressors that you don't want in your model. Or I should say ORDVEC takes a lot of regressors and will model them out of your data. Okay, so let's take a brief look at that in our so6.results directory. Now there's this design matrix.x.jpg, which I'm looking at with the AIV tool. And this may look completely incomprehensible to you if it's your first time looking at something like this. But notice, these first, I think, four or five, that those are the, the polynomials for things like a linear drift, quadratic drift, cubic drift, and the longer your time series is, the higher order polynomials it's going to model out. These next six are your motion regressors, another six are your motion derivatives, and starting about here is where that 1db port is starting to model out a lot of your frequencies. So notice dark, I may be getting these mixed up, but let's say that dark is lower and lighter is higher, right? So this is like a really low frequency sine wave that you can, if you imagine it kind of coming out 
towards you as it's getting lighter. Okay, another frequency, a little bit higher frequency, higher frequency, higher frequency, and then there's a jump to really high frequencies. Remember, the frequencies between 0.01 and 0.1 have been effectively removed from this model. Everything else we're putting into the model because we want to model that out of our data, filter it out. Okay, and it gets to a limit of a really high frequency up here. That's to give you an idea of what is going on. Now, also notice that there's something called an error time series. If you've used this with a task-related data set, the error time series is everything that cannot be explained by your model. And usually, you don't worry too much about it. But in the case of resting state analysis, everything that we put into our model is stuff that we want to remove from it. Right? So things like the motion, things like the frequencies, things like the slow scanner drift with the polynomials, we're going to project that out of our data. There's another command in there called 3DT project during the pre-processing, which is going to detrend all of that stuff out of your data. Basically, it's just a way of scrubbing or cleaning up your data to remove any sources of noise. Where you need to kind of flip it around your mind is that with resting state data analysis, the error time series is what we're interested in and what we're going to be using for correlation because that is what has everything filtered out of it. All right. So knowing that and knowing that error time series is what we're going to be using, let's decide on a good candidate region for doing our resting state analysis. Remember, this default mode network is what I was going to focus on. So right here, this say this posterior cingulate cortex, let's say I have something like, uh, let's find something right on the midline right here. Let's say zero and uh, about right there. So note the coordinates right here, are 0, 50, and 27. Okay, that's what we're gonna be using for a command called 3D undump. Also, while you're at it, you may as well check things like do all my pre-processed images line up relatively well? Yeah, they seem to. There seems to be a good about amount of alignment between the two. So also make sure to check that as well. So what I'm gonna do with those coordinates, again, these are just ones that I've picked. You can base them off of other papers since all these images have been warped to a standardized space, or you can just base it on individual anatomical anatomy if you want to. I'm going to feed that through a pipe to 3D undump. Don't ask me why it's called that. And we're gonna call this PACC mask, and we're gonna give it a radius as a sphere of five, okay? And the master data set gives it the, the final dimensions of what we want the mask to be. So I'm, I'm gonna give it the air time series because we're gonna be extracting from that data set, right? And then lastly, X, Y, Z, if I just put a dash, that means take these coordinates that I put before the pipe and put them into this argument right here. So I'm going to do that, briefly check to make sure that indeed it is roughly where I want it to be. So I'm going to go back to my warped anatomical image and I'm going to overlay this PACC mask right there. Okay, so everything in red is what's going to be my mask. That's what I'm going to average over to extract my time series. So just double checking and just trying to give you the sense that you should really double check each step that you do. Easier said than done. I don't always do it, but you should. All right, so now to extract the time series from this mask using something called 3D Mask Av. I give it the quiet option because I'm only interested in the numbers, not the coordinates, which would be output without the quiet option. And I'm going to give it this mask, PACC mask. Okay, and then lastly, the last argument is this error time series, and I'm going to put it into something called pacc.ts.1d. Okay, here's another teaching moment. Don't put two dashes in any of these apnea commands. It's a bad habit from FreeSurfer. We'll get to that in a bit. All right, so again, double check, make sure that looks reasonable. So 1d plot, this is average across all the voxels in that mask for my error time series data set. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is look at this time series and try to match it up with every other time series in the brain and see what the correlation is like. So final step here, 
3D FIM Plus. Again, don't ask me why, what that stands for. The bucket is like your prefix. It's the name of your output data set. And we're going to output the correlation metric. A few more things. The ideal file. What are we going to do for cross-correlation? PACC underscore TS. And then we're going to give it the input again our T projected or detrended error time series. The output from this is going to be PACC underscore core. And I'm going to overlay this on our anatomical image just to get a better sense of where these things line up anatomically. So overlay PACC correlation. This is the correlation map. And what you'll see is obviously there's going to be a high degree of correlation around that area where we placed the mask and you can see the values right here. So correlation is about 0.9. Again, since we averaged over a relatively big sphere, a radius of five, it included about 20 voxels, it's not gonna be a correlation of one anywhere because we averaged across a bunch of things, right? But it's gonna be still pretty high in that area. And notice that, you know, if I threshold this a little bit to clean it up, maybe clusterize, just maybe, just maybe clusterize. I'll see that indeed I do get you know pretty good correlation with the anterior medial prefrontal cortex. This looks like a pretty typical resting state network. So you've done it. You have detected the resting state default mode network. And the last thing I want to have you do as an exercise is then tr uh, transform that into a Z map or a Z transform. Okay, this is called a Fisher's Z transform. I'm using 3D Calc which is AFNI's image calculator tool. For my input, it's going to be PACC underscore core. And the expression, the mathematical expression, is A10H, and I'm applying that to that data set. So A10H is the way that you convert Pearson's correlation coefficients to Z-scores. All right. Now, notice the reason we do this is because R values are not normally distributed, but these Z values are. And I'll leave it up to you to check that overlay compared to your correlation map and see how those two things match up. Once you have these, you can use these for a second level analysis. Once you've converted all of these correlation maps to Z maps for each subject. And if you've done it for task oriented analysis, the procedure is exactly the same. Feel more like you know what's going on now? We've only covered one method today of analyzing resting state data. Other methods include things like independent components analysis, clustering, and something called graph theory. So if you want to learn more about those, click on the blog post down below, which will give you links to each of those methods, and we'll also have a series of exercises covering what we talked about today.